when a person comes up to you, you know, they're new, you know, they don't know much about Islam, and, you know, you just met them off the streets, and they ask you, well, Yusuf, what is Islam? What do we, what do you tell people? What do we tell people? Well, first of all, I have to reflect back and remember how it was from my own condition. Yes. I thought Be you would. Because uh, this is really, when I was talking about SDS, see, I'm going to work it in, like it or not. Okay, it's good. It's going to happen. That, uh, <laughs> the first thing is that I found myself searching. Yes. And I look at other people when they talk to me or they ask me questions. I really believe a lot of people don't know why we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, why am I here? What am I doing with my life? Where am I going? What's happening with me? Yes. Why am I doing what I do? You know, what is this about? Is this just repetition? I go through the life and then what? Die and that's it? Or, you know, why are we here? So this is a stage of S, meaning mm -hmm. search. To search and try to discover what's going on. Well, what then the D stands for? Discover. Mm -hmm. Because when you discover it and you realize what it is, then the only thing left to do is what? Share. Share. And you share. That's SDS. And uh, I just came up with this leftover uh, baggage, but <laughs> you got to do that. Well, we gotta appreciate do the letters. The baggage. We appreciate the letters. <laughs> we, we live in a society. you got to have letters. Okay. Yeah, I think so. so well, I, you know what? By the way, you know I live in Washington, D.C. area now. Uh -huh. And uh, for sure, in that place, people are crazy about using letters. Letters mean so much to them that uh, the more letters that they use, the more money they're going to charge the taxpayers oh, for it. Watch out. Watch out. <laughs> so now tell us. Someone comes up, okay. they want to know, what is this like? What yeah. the, what First, like I said, I put myself in the mindset of that individual, where he's at with his thinking or where she's at with her thinking. And you have to overcome a lot of stereotyping. Yes. Because right like away, what? well, immediately when you say Islam, Muslims, people have a tendency to say, oh, is this going to be something to do with terrorism, mm -hmm. kidnapping, hijacking, bombing, yes. uh, things like this. So you got to work through all that stuff first. I, I generally have a tendency to just set that over on a shelf and get back to it later. Right. Because there are things that go on in the world which nobody can de uh, deny. That's right. true. Right. But at the same time, we want to sift out the truth from the falsehood and then the stereotyping and then the misunderstandings and misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you have to realize that people, regardless if they're politicians, reporters, or whoever, they have an agenda. They're trying yes. to accomplish something. And they really don't much care about how many people get run over in the process. Mm, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, not all politicians, not all reporters. Mm. Uh, just like... But too many. Well, yeah. yeah. We can say too many. Even one's too many. But, so, how do you approach somebody is to by going and thinking, get inside their head and think, how do they feel? Mm. They're looking at me standing there like this and wearing this uh, garb that I have on or how you're dressed like that. And already they're kind of put off like, well, what is this? What's going on here with this? But also it's advertising for Islam. Because people will say to you, well, I'm going to be brave. I'm going to go up and ask him, oh, are, are you one of the Muslims? Or what do you Islamics think about this or that? Or, or how come you guys do so and so? How come you wear that? Do you have to wear that? Yeah. That has happened to me often too. Yeah. Or uh, like in the case of the women, they'll say, no, do you force them to dress like this or something like that? It gives you a chance it's to hard. open the door conversation. Yes. So you can help them in their search. And it's not necessary to go into such subjects and get details on things where it's not really the mainstream issue. Which okay. is? Well, the mainstream issue, of course, in Islam is to focus on what is the Tawheed or the oneness of God. Mm. Because without that, there's no Islam. Mm. There isn't anything else. Mm. The rest of it's conversation. The rest of it's politics. Right, the rest right. of it is just somebody coming up with excuses to make problems for other people. Mm. The key to the whole thing is to have the correct understanding about it. Is there a God, number one? Well, is there proof? That. And then, who is the God? What's the concept or the nature of the God? Mm -hmm. And then, why did he put me here? Right. So if we can get that together, then we can move forward. Well, help us. Help us get that together, please. Well, first of all, let's prove there's a God. Okay. Or prove that there isn't. Because a lot of the people will come to you right away and they'll say, Well, no, everything all started from a big bang, something, some dense uh, material in space, and it blew up, and that started everything. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, if that's the way it is, then where did intelligence come from? Mm. Where does life come from out of death or, or not in animation? Mm. How does a rock suddenly sprout tree leaves? And, you know, so you have to look at some basic thing and discover there must be something. If you recognize this as a creation, you have to acknowledge a creator. Absolutely. Does it make sense? Absolutely. If you're walking along the beach and you see sand and you see footprints in the sand, 
and you notice that it's barefoot and it's going in that direction, you don't say that the ocean came in and depressed those down like that. It you just, know that just happened to be there. Yeah, you wouldn't say that. Oh, just someone, someone was here. I was in. I remember being in a military installation one time, and uh, we had one or two that were absolutely don't believe anything. And there were maps on the wall of the building, you know. So I asked, does everybody here believe in God? Yes. Okay, and anybody doesn't. They said, there's two or three, I guess. They didn't believe at all. Nothing. I said, why? They said, because we don't see it, we don't hear it, we don't taste it, we don't smell it, don't feel it. In other words, it's sensory. There's no perception of God, so why should I believe in a God? I said, so you have to see God created to believe it. They said, that's right. I said, okay, how many of you see these maps on the walls here? Everybody put their hands up. I said, you guys that said that a minute ago, put your hands back down. They said, why? I said, because if you have to see the artist do the work, then these are not maps to you. Mm -hmm. This is just paper and ink. That's right. If that. So it's an illusion, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so we talk to people, and, and we get them to uh, accept step one. There must be a God. There's a creation, so there must be creator. Of course, there's only two things that does exist. It's either creator or it's creation. And the two aren't similar. Okay? This is what Islam teaches. I don't know what other people teach, but the creator has his names and attributes and we have our attributes and they're not the same okay we've got past that there's a creation of course there's a creator then where do we take them actually I don't want to run away from that point too fast okay because this is where a lot of religion goes nuts is not being able to make the differentiation between the creator and the creation and they'll mm. say everything is made out of God or mm. a remnant of God or a part of a garment or, of God or, uh, or God is in me or God's everywhere yeah uh, and the children of God. So we're yeah. all particles of God. Or, yeah, yeah, like you said, God is in me. Because all of that will misguide the person. Yes. It's still messed up because you can't resolve some issues. Because if God is in the creation, who created God? Mm. And then if God's in the oh, creation, right. Right. then who takes care of God? Mm. Because there's a, there's a dual factor, not just a creator. You have to understand there's also a sustainer. So this is not the same role. Create something, you can walk away and leave it. Mm -hmm. huh? Like a car deal. Car deal. They, <laughs> they, they make a car, they just walk car. away and leave it. Don't pick up the car. Buy it at least. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, but so who's going to take care of this creation? And who is the, the one taking care of to see that this happens and that happens and so and so and so? So we as Muslims accept there's a creator, but at the same time he's a sustainer right. of all. And he's not created, guess what else? He's also not sustained. Mm -hmm. Look what he said in the Quran. In the Quran, I would blame in the Shaitan regime. Allahu, la ilaha illahu, Allah you kayum. La tahudahu sinatun wala naum. And it says here, Allah, He is the one beside whom there's none other to worship. Now, He is alive, the living God. He is alive, and at the same time, He's self subsisting. He doesn't die, He doesn't need sustenance. No then, sustenance. Then He follows up with that, and He says, and He doesn't sleep now. He doesn't sleep, and He doesn't get tired. Right. So, this is important to sleep establish. and slumber doesn't overtake Him. That's easy for you yes. to say. But the point the point we're trying to get across to folks is that in Islam we have a we do have a different God in a sense because a lot of people say, Well, well your Allah is not like my God. Well, I don't know what your God is, but my God's real. Yes. Okay? And he's not in his creation. I can't grab him or a part of him and damage him. And he says, God says, that if all of his creation came together at the same time to try to to benefit him in any possible way, they could never benefit him. At the same time, if they all came together to try to damage him or do something against him, they can't. Right. Why? Because their creation, he's the creator. Right. They're sustained and he's sustained. He has a name, by the way, called as I love this name. Mm. Eternally sought after through all eternity by his creation for the sustenance. A big mm. name, but look how easy it is to say it in Arabic. as mm. as And he tells us that in the Quran. And he says, Bismillah Call who Allahu had mm. Allahu Samad. Yes. Is it beautiful? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Say he is Allah the unique. Mm. He's Allah the unique. I love that. Ahad. And he is Samad. Samad meaning that he is eternally sought after through all times by his creation for their sustenance. Yes. Okay, so we establish Allah as a creator, mm -hmm. separate from creation, uh -huh. and he's al khaliq he's the creator of everything, mm -hmm. he's al rub he's the nourisher and sustainer of everything, mm -hmm. and he's al malik he's the mm -hmm. owner of everything, mm -hmm. and he's the one who does this, mm -hmm. but he himself is not sustained, mm -hmm. he himself is not created, okay, and 
He doesn't look like you. He, he's not. He's not a white guy. He's not a black guy. He's not a woman. He's not a man. Now, he's a god. He's a law. He's okay. okay. And now, but what's this? So go back to those guys who said we don't see it, we don't smell it, we don't taste it, we don't hear it, we don't feel it, we don't believe in it. Okay, let's go like this. If you can hear it, if you can see it, if you can smell it, taste it, feel it, or imagine it, then it's not God. There you go. I like. Go that. the reverse way. It's not, is it? Absolutely. I got another right. one for you. Do Muslims believe in evolution? Now this is a good one because most of the people say, well, you believe in God, then you don't believe in evolution. Or you believe in evolution, don't believe in God. So you got the scientists on the one side, the Christians on the other side we fighting each other. But we don't have that problem. No, we he's al Khalaq, which yeah. is the creator, yeah. and he's al Bari, which is the evolver. That's right. So if there's creation, he created it. And if there's evolution, he evolved it. That's right. Right or wrong? That's right. But we solved some other problems. Some of the dumb problems that you've heard about for centuries, these things, they're not big. No, to us, we can solve any problem with Islam. Look, mm -hmm. which came first, chicken or the egg? Well, they say, well, the chicken. Well, where did the chicken come from? The egg. Where did the egg come from? The chicken. And they play that. You ever heard that yes, one? Yes, I've heard that. <laughs> Islam gave you the answer. Allah said he created everything in bears. Bears. Mm. Bull, male, female, chicken, and rooster. Mm. Forget about the egg. That's right. That came later. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Very good point. After the chicken learned what the rooster was about, all that. <laughs> After they were guided to, uh, uh, to, to pro procreate, right? Well, listen, now, all right, we've got that. Now, now, what about, you mentioned something, why am I here? We only have about uh, maybe two minutes left to this part of the show, and then we'll go to the second half. But why am I here? I know we say the Quran teaches us, You have not created the, uh, the, uh, the jinn nor the human being except that we should worship Allah, mm -hmm. except for worship. This is the purpose so, of Allah? When I came to that point, what I did, I put my head on the ground, facing toward the direction I'd seen this Muslim. I was trying to convert a Muslim, you know that, mm. to become a Christian. But I had seen him pray day after day after day. I said, let me try that out. Nobody can see me here, you know, give a lot, except mm. a lot. I put my head down, and I faced that direction that he did. I was out behind my dad's house on a piece of wood out there. And I put my head down, there and, I, and, I, and I said, oh, God, if you can hear me, if you're there, you know, guide me. That's it. Mm -hmm. When I pulled my head up, I didn't see any miracles. I didn't see dancing rainbows. I didn't see little fairies coming around. I didn't see, you know, bright lights. All it was was a cloudy day in Texas, because that's what it was at the time. But guess what? And I'm not joking with you. I could see inside myself, and I could see the problem was me. Mm -hmm. I was not being honest. I was rationalizing. Mm -hmm. I was playing with truth, trying to make truth fit what I already believed. Mm -hmm. It's not until you reverse everything and look at it from the other perspective you realize that you were created by God, so it's up to God to show you what He wants you to do. Good point. So that's the purpose of life, do what God wants you to do, and put your own ego to the side. Good. With that, we're going to take a short pause, and we'll be right back. This is uh, Dean Online. I'm Imam Shamsuddin. This is Yusuf Estes, and we're going to be right back. Call a friend. Tell him to tune in. See you in a minute. All right, welcome back. This is still Dean Online, and I'm still Shamsuddin, and our guest here is still Estes, Yusuf Estes. I'm, 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 I'm confused now, right? I, I don't know. We were just talking about why we're here. You know, you, you were explaining about mm -hmm. create Tor and create Sean and mm -hmm. uh, the difference between the two. He's not sustained, but he sustains. He's not created, but he creates. He's taking and evolving all these things. And we were talking about how the purpose of life was what? That we worship, obey Allah, our Creator, and not let our own ego get in the way. I think it was what you were mentioning to us, but get the ego out the way and let uh, let Allah guide us, which is what you prayed for. And, uh, and Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, He has guided you to Islam. I've given that in speeches, by the way, when I'm talking to people, or even when I write to them through email or anything. When I go to our website, which, by the way, you which probably really would like to ask me that. Yeah, way. what is the website? How do we get in touch with you nowadays? It used to be t Islam Today, remember? Yes. Okay, we changed it. Oh, what is it now? Today Islam. Today Islam. Yeah. Okay. You know why? Tell me. I'm going to save the best for last. Today Islam. All right, good. You like that? It's dot com. Okay. Today Islam dot com. Yeah. So that's how we can get in touch with you, email you, and, uh, you know, talk to you. Whatever. And, all right. Good enough. Okay, now, in email and in personal conversation with people, lectures, and all the rest of it, I like to end it by telling people, look, never mind what I said. 
Okay? Because I'm just a human being. Maybe I'm trying to influence you, right? Mm, right. So why don't you just take something that belongs to you that nobody else can even even look at, and that's your own heart, mm. right? Take your heart, your ego, whatever, and go out in your little closet where you like to talk to yourself, and then pray in your heart and say, Oh, God, if you're there, guide me. Mm. Okay? Like and then, did. Yeah, silently. Yeah. And then if guidance comes to you, where did it come from? It sure wasn't me. It wasn't you, sir. It right. wasn't me. Right. So if you're guided, then it had to be from your Lord. Mm. And if that happens, then it will be the best of guidance because he's the only one who can guide us anyway. That's right. Makes sense? Makes sense to me. Sense makes dollars. I agree Sorry. with you. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> okay, listen. We, we, I, we, we've, we've said what we've said, and hopefully the people have understood what, what we have just said in regards to the difference in, you know, worshiping God and obeying him and putting the ego aside and find a place, a quiet place to consult your heart mm -hmm. and ask Allah for guidance. Check it out. Good advice. Now, how after after all that, and, and the person comes to the conclusion, you may come to that conclusion today. I'm ready to be a Muslim. Now, what does he do? What does she do? What does he do? How do they become a Muslim? Oh, first of all, why would they want to be a Muslim? What's that got to do with anything? Hmm. The, the, we're talking about something here about God in a relationship. Okay. Why did you introduce these Arabic words? That's the next thing is that they have to have an understanding about the Arabic hmm. before we get to that. So first. You recognize there's a God, and you want to submit to God. Stop. Mm -hmm. That's it. You're there. You're there. You just haven't done it yet. You're at the door. You're like knocking on the door. Because it's you're worth asking submit. for the guidance. You're ready to go. You're, you know. All, but now, when the door opens, what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you really found out what God wants you to do, right? Mm -hmm. Then you'd be expected to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it? Another key is: Are you willing to do it? After you find out what He wants you to do, are you oh, willing to problem. do it? That's where the problem comes in. That's the real problem right there. Because let's look at what does Islam mean. Islam actually means in Arabic five words that come from the root. Salam. Salam. Mm -hmm. Salam. Comes from there, which is peace. Mm -hmm. But that's only one part of it. That's only one fifth, 20%. What about the other 80%? Because people say Islam is peace. No, that's 20%. Look at this. First, it means surrender. Mm -hmm. Then it means submission. Yes. Then it means obedience. Then it means sincerity. And if you truly surrender to Allah and you completely submit to him on his terms sign the covenant sign the testament sign the agreement that's where those words came from mm. you're going to commit yourself to what Allah has revealed to you then you're ready to see if you can do it that's your to see you walk the walk mm. to match the talk oh. that you came up with so that's the obedience now if you did that and you did it in sincerity for sure you'll have the peace mm. not peace in the Middle East mm. talking about peace with Allah Right. Okay? So when that he gets... That can only come from Allah. Yeah, you could say it in English. You don't have to say it in Arabic. But why do you want to say submission, surrender, obedience, sincerity, and peace? When you could just say Islam, and it means the same thing. Mm. Okay? But it means in a direction. The verb is pointed right at Allah. Mm. Okay? It means well, to do it to Allah. But on the other end of the pointing is who? You. Right. And in Arabic, you don't use the suffixes er. Like walk er, talk er, think er, stink er. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. But <laughs> got carried away. But in the Arabic language, they use the prefix mim right. with the sound of mu in front of it. Like somebody's a traveler, which is suffer. Our word safari comes from that. Mm. So he's a musafar. Mm. Safar, musafar. Right. One who calls the prayer is the adan. He's the one who does it is the mu'adan. Mu'adan, right? So the one who uh, worships makes salah he's called musalli mm. and the one who islams mm -hmm. mu muslim islam muslim, muslim. so if you want to submit surrender and obey and do it in sincerity and peace with your lord then you can say it in arabic if you want to muslim mm. and you can say this i shadow i bear witness an la ilaha there is no deity worthy to worship illallah except allah and then you've done it. That's it. You can do it in English. You can do it in Arabic. You can do both. The main thing is, where's your heart? Because Allah is going to judge this heart of yours. Mm -hmm. All of us. So now, that's half of it when the person the, decides, I'm ready to submit. Mm -hmm. That la ashhadu and la I bear witness that there's none. Towards ilaha illallah. Mm -hmm. There's none worthy of worship. Except Allah. Mm -hmm. ilaha illallah. And the second half comes in, which is what I want to ask you about a little bit. Okay. Well, Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan 
Rasulullah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Okay, I got a question for you. You just got through saying you're ready to surrender. You're ready to submit. You're ready to obey. You're ready to do it in sincerity and peace, right? Yes. What? Mm. What? What are you ready to do? There ain't nothing in front of you. That's like saying I come to the table, right? I got my napkin on here, right? I got my fork in this end. I got my spoon over here. I'm ready to go. Ready? Oh, only one problem. There ain't nothing in front of you. Mm. We need something in front of you. So Allah, He sends people to give that something in front of you. Good. What is it? It's the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or each prophet came with their own Sunnah. Or way. Right. Sunnah means way. Right. And the way of each prophet was to tell the people, look. And look what He said in the Quran. He says what He... Uh, yeah. All the prophets said this. Mm. Meaning that they were never ordered anything more. Except all the people from before, from the Jews and from the Christians and from all the people, when the prophets came to them, they were ordered nothing more than to worship Allah alone and keep the religion pure for Him. That's right. Establish regular worship, mm -hmm. the Salah. And then pay the Zakah, which is the poor chari do it, the, charity. The charity. Mm -hmm. huh? And this is the religion most clear. That's it. And that's what Muhammad, peace be upon him, came with. He confirmed the previous revelations. He confirmed the previous prophets. And then the people who don't want to submit come along and then they make up the stories against him and against the other prophets. And may Allah guide all of us. I mean, may Allah guide all of us. Amen. Well, I surely thank you for that. I, 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 I like to uh, end this uh, conversation that we're having. We're in the habit now of, uh, we've changed the show a little bit, we're in the habit of taking questions, two or three questions from our audience, and we have a couple questions that uh, we'd like to ask instead of me answering, maybe you can answer. One is, um, uh, I'm, I'm from a, a Christian uh, family, uh, uh, how do I handle their dislike about me becoming a Muslim? I'm assuming that means he's not a Muslim or she's not a Muslim yet, but she wants to be a Muslim or he wants to be a Muslim. How are they going to handle this? This question, I get a lot on the Internet. Mm. On our website, todayislam.com. Sorry, I just stick in there. Todayislam.com. Yeah. But we get a lot of that question. It's the exact same question. And what we advise them to do is, first of all, don't make everything look strange. Don't approach this from the standpoint that you became some kind of a, an Arab. Martian. Or, that you, or a Martian from another planet or that you've got to wear weird clothes or anything like that. I do dress strange, maybe, and you dress strange, but this is not, this is not mandated in, in Islam. We don't have to do this. We begin by our worship. If our worship is good with our Lord, shouldn't it be reflected in our actions? Absolutely. Shouldn't it be re reflected in our relationship with people? Absolutely. Especially so should, your parents. Mm, it should be that Family. we would give the correct treatment to our parents, to our relatives, Absolutely. and if they see us being nice, every time I see you, I give you a hundred dollar bill. Are you going to be mad at me? No, I'm going to be happy. Jack. You're going to get over it. I'll get over it. <laughs> you get over it. It's a lot of weight to carry around, but you get over it. So give them the good treatment. Number right. one. Number two. I got to hurry up. I got let them seconds. let them see you practice the religion and not just talk about good, it. Good. Good. Because when people see it in you, you're living it. It's a lot easier. And Excellent. give them time. Be patient. Pray for them. Yes. Pray for them. Well, that's the uh, that's the advice for today. You know, in regards to uh, dealing with your family and uh, and uh, who may not be Muslim, but you want to become Muslim. So with that, this is Dean Online. This has been Yusuf Estes with us today from Texas, and we're so glad to have him on the show again. And once again, if you want to communicate with him at todayislam.com. Todayislam.com. Until next time, this is Dean Online. Take care.